before we begin, I'd like to clarify that uh, we are not here as electromagnetic radiation scientists, but we have read the scientific documentation because the literature is becoming more and more voluminous on the dangers associated with that. So the information that Pana is going to present to you comes from peer-reviewed scientific journals, and we have sent you the information, so I wanted to make that clear. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate it. Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. My name is Tana Peterson. I'm a member of SENS. You get Alan as the director. I've lived in Vernon for 20 years, and recently I've become a grandmother. And that is why I'm here. So today I will explain what 5G is, what our concerns are, who else is concerned, and then ask Vernon to act on this information. I will be referring to EMR, EMF, RFR. These are all related terms for radiation. A gigahertz is a billion cycles per second. 5G stands for the fifth generation of wireless technology. It promises better, faster, and it makes the way for the Internet of Things, which allows devices to talk to each other and to the cloud without the intervention of humans. It also is being rolled out around the world as fast as possible. 3 and 4G frequencies, already in use, are below 6 gigahertz with up to 12 centimeter waves, whereas 5G uses 10 millimeter waves, much and much higher frequencies, between 30 to 100 gigahertz. So for the first time ever, we will be subjected to this type of wave. In order to function, base stations with clusters of antennas will have to be placed every 150 to 200 meters apart everywhere with enough energy to ensure the waves penetrate into buildings. Without our consent, we will all be subjected to this radiation 24-7. There has not been one study that has proven that 5G will be safe. Government limits were set before 1980 based on short-term heating risks. However, as pointed out in the Scientific American article I've given you, Studies have found harmful biological effects from exposure to RFR at intensities too low to cause significant heating. And The Lancet, among the world's oldest and most prestigious medical journals, agrees in its planetary health. More than 10,000 peer-reviewed scientific studies have demonstrated harm to human health from RFR. It is not just exposure. It's the proximity, duration, and cumulative effects of this radiation that have led scientists to realize that diseases, cancers, DNA damage, etc., are on an increase due to it, and a new disease, EHS, created. As early, oh, and fetuses, infants, and children are most at risk absorbing up to two to ten times more radiation than adults, not just because of their size, but because their blood-brain barrier has not yet fully developed. As early as 2015, 215 scientists from 41 countries communicated their alarm to the United Nations and the World Health Organization, stating that EMF affects living organisms at levels well below most international and national guidelines. The European Union-funded research eclipse showed that the natural world, yes, the birds, the bees, the plants, are also negatively affected. From microbes on up, EMR harms all living things since it damages all living cells. In addition, the Environmental Health Trust points out that 5G actually contributes to more global warming. Physicians for Safe Technology state, Clear evidence of harm warrants an international agency for research on cancer upgrade to a group one known carcinogen. These scientists are now warning that its predictable adverse effect will create biological, environmental, as well as societal disruption and will be impossible to reverse. Almost 200,000 of these citizens have signed an international appeal asking to stop 5G. This last Saturday, there was an international protest of 5G in almost 200 cities, and lawsuits are piling up. 
Conflict of interest is very real, and this just may be the most powerful industry on the planet. There are enormous sums of money to be made with 5G. When you Google 5G dangers, you will find dozens or more links to credible sources against the deployment of 5G. When Googling 5G alone, you will find several, several links denying any risk. Who would you believe? Please, please look at the credentials of the many professionals we've quoted in the material given to you. Please watch the three very short but very informative videos of professionals, one being the former president of Microsoft Canada. Please investigate the lawsuits and the government rulings we've given you. One lawsuit in particular, filed by two cell phone industry defectors, points to the illegal spending of a trillion dollars towards 5G, much of it specifically allocated for fiber optics. And the ironic thing being that fiber optics is safe. The, the precautionary principle implies a social responsibility to protect, protect the public from exposure when scientific evidence about an environmental or human health hazard is uncertain and the stakes are high. We're asking Vernon to do what Geneva, Brussels, and hundreds of cities around the world have done to use the precautionary principle to protect our citizens. We're asking Vernon for a moratorium on 5G installment until Council is sure it poses no environmental harm or health hazard. We're asking that Vernon bring concerns about 5G to our, the RDNO board and ask for a full regional moratorium. We're asking a committee be formed, as has Mississauga, Ontario, to study this issue and this information we've given you brought to Mr. Pierce. <laughs> Pierce. Is it Pierce? Yes. Um, we're hoping that you come to the same conclusion as the Minister of Environment of Brussels when she says, when she said, the people of Brussels are not guinea pigs whose health can be sold at a profit. 5G is insidious in the real world sense of the word, in that its installation is gradual and subtle, and harmful effects may not be possible to eradicate once it's installed. We hope this is only the beginning of a dialogue that will re result in educating yourselves and the public, particularly the health and education sectors. And, um, thank you. And if and you, you get Alan, and I will try to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Peterman. Carl Figueres. Is it Tara or Tana? It's Tana. Tana. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you, Tana, for your um, presentation. I, I do have some questions, and and I'm going to just be uh, straight up on this one. My brother works in this field. Oh, um, well, I've got a good anecdote back for you. Yeah, <laughs> so he is an engineer, and, and this is this is his uh, level of experience. So I reached out to him because, of course, it's not mine to get right. more information. Mm -hmm. So the one question I have for you is, do you know what the established safety limits are for human exposure to radio frequency electromagnetic energy as outlined by Health Canada? I couldn't hear that either, but, um, but I'm, Would you like I'm, me to I'm understanding yeah, about Health Canada, you're saying? I'll just, I'll repeat okay. my question. Yep. Do you know what the established safety limits are for human exposure to radio frequency electromagnetic energy as outlined by Health Canada? Um, I don't personally know that. I know that the Health Canada, Health Canada standards, again, were set in, before 1980, and it had to do with non-ionizing. Um, ionizing. The big difference is what they are looking at is anything that heats the skin. So they're looking at the effect of heat on the skin. But that's not what's happening with this. It's oxidative stress. And if you look at the literature, what happens is that if you have oxidative stress, you end up having free radicals, and that uh, gives rise to precursor cells to cancer. So this is the kind of thing that the scientists are now warning us about. So based on Health Canada, they're saying that it's between 3 kilohertz up to 300 um, gigahertz is what the allowable uh, frequency is allowed to be. That's your exposure. 
So if I look at your presentation, you're saying that the 5G network can use up to 100 gigahertz, which is below the Health Canada safety standards. Um, do you know what Health Canada employs when organizations, whether it's telecommunications, um, install these services? What safety code do they use? I don't know that. But safety I'll, Code 6? Correct. Yeah. Great job. So, Safety Code 6 is a standard that is set by Health Canada. And they mm -hmm. monitor all the peer review and the scientific um, reports that do come out. So even though it was initially set back in the 80s, it hasn't been since the 80s. They have revamped it much later than that, 2014 or 15, I believe. Mm -hmm. So they, they have been testing it. And I mean, the cell when cell phones came out in the 80s, it was the exact same thing that people were concerned about. The cell phones in the 80s actually emitted more than the cell phones of today, despite the fact that obviously we're using new technology. Um, and with the 5G network, the 5G network is actually using the LTE network, which is you know, part of that 4G. They're the same spectrum. And those frequency ranges are from 600 megahertz up to 6 gigahertz. So again, if we're looking at yours, we're below that safety standard. And part of the safety standard is also 50 times less the actual exposure rate that would have negative impact effects. Now, I haven't had a chance to review, of course, peer review or anything like that. So I would love to do that. So I'm going to take the time to do that because I think it's critical. Um, I don't think it's wise of us to denounce it 100% or in support of it without doing our necessary research for that because you're absolutely right. You Google it and you've got a 50-50 split on both sides. So it's trying to weed out you know, the elements of correctness, if you will, on that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it's so important to actually look at who is saying what. Um, one of the videos will explain this if you watch that, Dr. Sharon Goldberg. And, and the other thing too is with the non-ionizing mm -hmm. um, radiation and of course cell towers and cell phones are all part of that. Um, one which thing don't there. change your cell structure. If we're, if we're looking at scientific fact, non-ionizing radiation doesn't change cell structure as part of your scientific background. Um, one thing I want to say though about this is that we're discussing now what Health Canada is saying and what health scientists around the world are warning about. Health Canada is the same Health Canada that said that cigarettes were safe. The same Health Canada that said that pesticides are safe. We now have children, childhood cancers. We have a lot of issues happening with health that nobody can really pinpoint where it's coming from. So what these scientists are saying is that there is a real health concern and there are cities and areas around the world that are now saying we believe this rather than believing those who are making money from it. I also have a son who's a software engineer making tons of money, but that's neither here nor there. I believe that the health of the people is much more, uh, it's much more important than anybody making money. So what we're asking of you is to please look at what we sent you if you want to dismiss it, then you will. But I think you will find that many cities and many areas, once they have looked at the real information, have decided to, to say we will protect our citizens. And what they're asking is they're saying to, you could do that with interior health, they're saying please prove that it's safe before we let it happen. Because as Tana said, it's insidious. It's going to be installed little bit by little bit. And by the time it's there, all the harm is done, and there's nothing we can do. Yes, it uses some of 4G, but it's going to be 5G everywhere because with the Internet of Things, you need it. So that's really what we want. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'm being shut down. I have yes. more questions, yes. so maybe what I'll do is I'll reach out to you directly. Okay. Thank I think you. it's very good. And Councilor Garris, I think it's really important. Maybe you would bring back a suggestion to us on how we go about exploring oh, this in a very, pardon me? I didn't mean to bring that suggestion. I was just asking you questions, yeah. clarification, because if we're being asked to submit a letter to RDNO 
in favor of a moratorium, I think it's important for us as counselors to also know the other side and what that information is. You know, Councilor Garrett, I, I think what we're asking, if you, the way in which the systems work, you can ask for something to be brought back on that particular yeah. item. And we can have a deep conversation on that item. I think that would be viable. Yep. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So, be great. You know, we'd like to know too. Okay. Thank you very much for your Thank presentation. You.